Welcome to Lab 3 Part 1 where we will cover the bisection method. Here we have the definition of the bisection method. We will be using this to program the function. To start off we must first import our libraries. We will be using numpy as well as pandas. Pandas is a library we will use to display our tables. First, we will declare a function that returns the results of step 2. We will call this function bisect2 with the inputs of f, a, and b, where f is a function and a and b are numbers, then a colon. Then we see here that xi equals a plus b divided by 2. So in our function, we will set xi equal to brackets a plus b divided by 2. The first condition is if f at a times f at b is greater than 0, in which case we will return xi, a, b, and the message root not bracketed. Then the next condition is if f at xi equals 0, then the root has been found, the value of the error is 0, and so we exit. So here we will use an L if with the condition f of xi equal to 0, then we return xi, a, b, and the message root found. Then the third condition is if f of xi times f of a is less than 0, then for the next iteration, xi plus 1 is bracketed between a and xi. So here we will say l if f of xi times by f of a is less than 0, then we will return xi a xi and the message root between a and xi. Our last condition is if f of xi times f of b is less than 0, then the next iteration x of i plus 1 is bracketed between xi and b. So here we will say l if f of xi times f of b is less than 0, then we will return xi, xi, b, and then the message root between xi and b. Now that we have this helper function, we can declare our actual bisection function, which we will call bisection, with the following inputs of the function f, and the interval a, b, the max number of iterations, and then the stopping error. Next, we will declare a couple tables. The first is our error table, with a starting value of 1. Then, we have our error note table, which will be empty, and our a table, with a starting value of a, our b table with a starting value of b, our x table which will be empty. Next we will declare a variable called stop code equal to no stopping, which will be a condition for our while loop to stop, and then a value i equals 0. Next we will declare our while loop, which will keep looping while i is less than or equal to our max iterations, and while the stop code is equal to no stopping. Then we will call our bisect2 function, and we will set that equal to ri equal to bisect2. Here we will pass in the inputs f, the value of a table at i, and the value of b table at i. ri will be the return value from bisect2, which is a list. From this list, we will extract the message which is at index 3. So here we will use an if statement and the message which is ri at index 3. And if that is equal to our first message, we will append x table with ri at 0, which is the value xi. Then we will append our error note table with our error message, which is at ri at 3. Then finally, we will break out of our while loop. If the message is equal to root found, then we will append our x table with ri at 0, which is our value of xi. And if we look up here, we see that if the root has been found, that the value of the error will be equal to 0. This means that we will append our error table with 0. Like before, we will append our message to our error note table. Then finally, since the root is found, we can break out of our while loop. 
Now that we have covered the first two conditions, this leaves us with the last two. And for the last two, we will do the same operations for both, so we don't need an if statement. And so for both of them, we will append to our A table the value at R, I at index 1. For our B table, we will append R, I at index 2. Then for our X table, we will append R, I at index 0. And like before, we will append our message to our error note table. Next, if we are not on our first iteration, we must calculate our error. So here we will say if i is not equal to 0, then we will calculate the error ei equal to x table at i minus x table at i minus 1 divided by x table at i. Then we will append this to our error table. Now looking at step 3, we see that if epsilon r is less than or equal to epsilon s, then the iterations will be stopped. Now we can translate that into code by saying if the absolute value of our error table at i, this will be the last value in the error table, if that is greater than eps, then the stop code will be equal to no stopping, else the stop code will be stop. Finally, we must increment i by 1. Now this is the end of our while loop. So we can backspace all the way to the left and then make one indent so that we're outside the while loop but still inside the function. Here we must make our table to display using all of these tables. And we will call that t2 equal to and then list comprehension, and then another square bracket. And the first column will be i plus 1. The second column will be our table A table. Third column will be our B table. The fourth column is our X table. The fifth column is F at every value of our A table. Our sixth column is F at every value in our B table. Our seventh column is F at every value in our x table, then our error table, and our error note table. Then step outside our inner list. The for loop for our list comprehension is for i in range of the length of x table. Now we have our table as a list. We must convert our list to a pandas data frame, which is what we will display. So to do this, we will set t equal to pd which is our pandas library dot data frame with the input t2 and then columns equal to which is the title of our column. Here it will be iteration a b x underscore i f at a f at b f at x underscore i e r and error note. Finally go ahead and display t. This is the final code for a bisection method. Now we can go ahead and test our function. We will do this by first declaring our function f to return numpy.sign of 5 times x plus the numpy.cos at 2 times x. And we can call our bisection function. Pass in our function f. And negative 0.6 for a, negative 0.5 for b, 100 for the max number of iterations, 001 for error. Let's go ahead and run that. And here you can see our table. 